races being postponed or canceled due to the coronavirus. We're looking for new ways to motivate ourselves, keep ourselves focused, and uh, strive for some new goals. Tomorrow, Henry Lutz, who's back from college due to canceled classes, and I are going to be headed out and trying to capture some historic K KOMs here in the Kettle Moraine area in southeastern Wisconsin. Southeastern Wisconsin being home to Trek races like Super Week and Tour of America's Dairyland. There are some very hard to get and well ridden KOMs that we're really excited to get at. Today is going to be a day for the hard men. If we get some KOMs, we will have earned it. 32 degrees high temperature, uh, no chance of rain, thank goodness. And we got 8 mile an hour wind, so we're not going to be getting much help from the wind. And it's going to be cold and we'll be fully dressed. So um, it's definitely going to be hard to pull this off, but we'll see what we can do. And if we, if we did, it's well earned. On a day like today, clothing selection is super important. You overdress and you overheat. You underdress and you're super cold neither of which is going to result in good performance. So I had to be thoughtful about what I was going to wear and uh, definitely went ahead and layered up. So I'll just kind of go through what I picked and why. Um, so I started with the base layer, uh, go ahead and something light on the skin, going to wick the, uh, wick the sweat away, keep me generally dry and warm. And over the top of that, I went with a looser long sleeve uh, Jack Welta um, jersey. Um, I opted for that long sleeve. It's loose fitting all the way around um, instead of having a jersey and a uh, set of arm warmers on. Um, then I had the Nova bibs, um, super comfortable. Uh, they're not insulated at all, um, but I wasn't too terribly worried about my legs getting cold um, up top. Um, had the Sidewinder jacket. It's the most um, comfortable and warm jacket I own. Uh, it's relatively lightweight. It's got a little bit of insulation on the inside, um, but it breathes super well and it keeps me from sweating too much. Uh, two pairs of gloves. That was super important for me. Um, always bring two pairs of gloves on cold days so you can switch in and out. Some wool Swiftwix socks, uh, leg warmers, and some insulated booties. Um, turned out to be perfect um, clothing for the day and I was super happy with my choice. Big efforts require proper nutrition. Um, in that regard, I, I made a couple mistakes. Um, I'll talk about that in a little bit. but. Um, this is kind of what I had laid out for myself. Um, I was going to bring some, some cliff bars, um, some shot blocks. Uh, it's really nice to have something to chew, but to still get the electrolytes and caffeine in. And then some uh, cliff shots as well. Uh, some caffeine shots and some regular shots. Um, and then I got Hydration GQ6. I got the 321 Hydrate, um, which is all electrolyte based. I've got the Energy, which is caffeine and taurine and ginseng. And then I've got the Endurance, which is your sodium, potassium, and beta. Um, I thought I was going to be well equipped, but it turned out um, that I uh, lost a bar on the ride and. Um, didn't have enough food along the way and I felt it towards the end. Um, made it through but could have done better. For the bike setup we got the Team Argon 18 Gallium CS. Um, it's technically their lower end bike but I promise you it does not perform like a low end bike. Um, definitely a wonderful bike for its price point. For the cockpit, I got the Zip SL Speed stem and bars, um, and then I got the K Edge Garmin mount and Garmin on there. Um, loving the, the red matte paint job on this bike, it's just a really clean, beautiful look. Um, got the mechanical shifting, I'll take her shifters, it came stock with the bike. Uh, the Reynolds AR41s with Schwalbe Pro 1 tubeless tires. Um, and running 25C on those. Got the SRAM Red Quark, um, SRAM Red Chain, and Cassette on there. So beautiful bike setup. 
Um, really pleased with how this performs and uh, really excited to give it a rip. For wheels, like I said, we're running the Reynolds AR41s. We had the opportunity to test them in the wind tunnel with the Schwalbe tubeless tire setup, and they are great. All right, that's enough. Let's get after it and talk KOMs. The first KOM we went after was Maple Grind. I used to live at the bottom of this hill, um, so wanted to get after this one and see how it went. Um, I thought a triathlete had it because the Pewaukee Triathlon is held here, but turns out I have it. Um, it was the first KOM of the day. Uh, we got out a little sooner than we should have. Um, I missed the start. I was off just, just a little bit, and that kind of threw us off for the rest of the attempt. Um, plus, we had a little bit more of a headwind than I anticipated us having. Um, so, unfortunately, um, I was leading Henry out for this one. Um, but as you can see, he fell a little bit off the pace. That was my fault, um, but luckily I had that KOM and I get to keep it for now. The next attempt was Victory on Vettelson. This is one of the most popular roads uh, because it is what gets you out to the Kettle Moraine Forest. The current KOM is held by Michael Lanyon and he took it during uh, the Bone Ride, which takes place every May. Um, you can see that uh, we got out pretty hot right away and uh, got a good gap on this. Uh, we just put in a big effort. I started it out. Henry took over and just gave me a huge pull um, all the way to the base of this little riser um, at the end of this KOM. And uh, I was able to click it down a couple gears and uh, put it into overdrive and uh, take this one by a few seconds. The next attempt was at Lapin Peak State Park. It's held by Max Ackerman. He's not a time trialist by any means, but he will tell you he was on one this day when he took this KOM. Um, so we went after it. I've tried and can never get it. Um, so we figured we'd lead out Henry into this one from the base. Um, and we started hot as hard as we could go right away. Um, I mean, I, at this point I'm digging 500, 550 watts um, through the base of this, Henry on my wheel. Um, it's probably 3 to 4 percent to start, um, but then there's a really steep kicker here and it just takes all the juice out of your legs. Um, I tried to get Henry back up to speed off the top of that and he came around me pretty quick. Um, it put a gap into me pretty quick too, so I was feeling really good about it. And at this point you can see um, he is right on pace or ahead, uh, but at the very end it kicks up again. And uh, Max, uh, that guy, he's got some snap and he must have put it to use that day because he put in a hell of a dig. Next up was the Col de Waterville. This is a pretty historic climb. It's at the start of the Dock Ride, which if you've ever been to southeastern Wisconsin, you've probably done that. It's held by Jacob Groth, um, who used to ride, ride and race for Team USA. Um, so the guy's got some legs and he's still a hell of an athlete. Um, but we were one for three at this point, so we decided we were gonna be all in and give it everything we got. And uh, Henry was gonna lead me into it. Um, gave me a ripper of a lead out here at the bottom of that and you take a sweeping left hand turn he slammed it down a couple gears and um, at that point I just came around him and uh, made that right hand turn and when you get to that point you start looking up the road and you realize how long this climb is um, you've got what feels like eternity to go um, and you are maxed out and it's not done once you come to the top you got to come over the top and keep going to the next driveway, um, but was able to take this one by three seconds. After Col de Waterville and four attempts, we were already pretty cooked and we were wondering how the Palmyra Road Race KOM was going to go. Um, it's a lap of a road race that's held every year in the um, WCA Cup and it's about a 17 minute effort, um, but we figured we were going to give it a run. Um, gotta love the slow turtle crossing sign um, along that. Um, doesn't keep you motivated, I can tell you that. Um, right away, um, we, we got going and we were behind. Um, Brian Fossler um, has this KOM um, 
or had that KLM. Uh, we ended up taking it from him. Uh, but he uh, he got he was ahead of us right away here, and uh, we were behind the entire time we were um, doing it. Though I kept telling Henry that we were a couple of seconds ahead. I believed that we were going to be able to come back and um, and still make good on this attempt. Um, so at this point we're almost 30 seconds behind uh, what the KOM time was um, but I kept believing kept telling Henry to give it a rip and um, at this point I just looked at him and I said all right kid hold on um, I'm gonna pull you to the corner and uh, you're just gonna sprint it out as hard as you can go so um, he held on we came through the corner pretty hot which was a little scary it was full gravel uh, but Henry was able to take this KOM um, on the day which was great to see Piper Hill is one of southeastern Wisconsin's many rustic roads. It's one of my favorite roads in the area and where I do a lot of my five minute intervals. I currently have this KOM um, and it is an epic one. Um, it is a beautiful, narrow, backcountry road. Um, and as soon as we started to, to get after it, um, we kind of both looked at each other and, and we were cooked at the moment. Uh, we didn't have a ton of time to recover before the last one, and so we threw in the towel. Um, but if you get a chance to get out to Piper Road, give it a rip, see if you can take the KOM from me. I'm looking for the challenge and uh, I want to have to get it back from somebody. So head out there and uh, take it on. The last attempt on the day was Subdivision Hill. Um, it is a extremely steep uh, climb and it is one of the, those types of climbs you're just out of the saddle the whole time and all you want to do is sit down but you can't. Um, we had an east wind so I had a little bit of a tailwind here. Henry led me into it with some speed for about 8 to 10 seconds and at that point I just knew I had to take over and uh, come around. I've done this climb multiple times and so I knew what I had to do and um, luckily I, I had the legs on the day. As I came around this bend, and that's kind of where it hit me, that we had already done all these efforts and all I wanted to do was sit down and stop. But I knew I was ahead, so I just kept on pedaling and got to that cul-de-sac and uh, was able to enjoy a little sunshine on the top and uh, be proud of today's efforts. At the end of the day, we rewarded ourselves with a beer from City Lights. If you have the opportunity, please go and support them and order takeout during the quarantine to support small businesses. Thank you for watching our Project Echelon Strava KLM hunting and hope you enjoyed.